everybody. <laughs> Happy to be here in Austin, live at Safe House. Thank you so much, Eric, for that introduction. Be sure to vote for Safe House, y'all. Um, so th thanks for hanging out. Uh, this is going to be a really cool show tonight. We have a lot of new things for me and for Safe House, a lot of firsts here. Um, thank you so much already for the donations before you even saw my face. That's amazing. <laughs> um, if you feel so inclined to continue to donate, um, a surprise will be triggered on the stage. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll get a little preview of it, perhaps. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm going to tell you uh, about the music that I'm singing as I'm singing it and kind of walk you through the last like two to three years of my life which has been a it's been a ride so <laughs> um please ask questions um and interact with me none of this is scripted I'm just like gonna say whatever so you're not gonna be interrupting me don't feel uh <laughs> Like you can't say things like nice balls. You can totally say things like nice balls to me. Um, and yeah, like, um, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I don't even know who all is present. I see a lot of familiar names. I see my Twitch gang and I see a lot of like uh, names of people that I don't know who you are because it's like too many birds. I'm like, that could be any of my friends. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a ride to say the least. I can give you a little, <laughs> a little bit of a look into what that means. Um, and yeah, th I'll just go ahead and start talking about the first song, but yeah, let me know if you have questions. Um, this first song is something I wrote about two to three years ago, and um, unfortunately, sometimes you have uh, a relationship that doesn't go the way you thought it was going to go, and it's hard to come to terms with that as a person because you, I mean, everyone goes into relationships with their heart open, you know, wishing for the best, and this song I wrote, um, kind of as I was realizing that I wasn't happy anymore. And that's a rough song to write when you're in a relationship because you're like, where is this coming from? <laughs> I should probably pay attention to this. But yeah, um, starting off on kind of like a <laughs> deep note here, but sometimes you have to get the thing you thought you wanted to realize it wasn't what you wanted at all. And that for me was marriage. Um, and I actually got divorced. So I, um, on the other side of that now, I've learned a lot. And this song is really important to me because it was the process me of, uh, of me understanding that. And yeah, just learning how to listen to my heart in the best way possible and I'm happy I did and I'm here now with you guys so this first song let's get started is called take me back Yeah. 
guys i know what a note to start the show on but hey it gets happier from here don't worry i mean not yet but i will ish <laughs> oh hi sam sam macriola is one of my oldest friends we go back to high school oh i think i saw oh yeah there is Thank you so much, The All Right Show, for the $10 tip. <laughs> yes, I can see your messages. I can respond to you, so feel free to say whatever. Um, so that song was, again, like about kind of, unfortunately, the decline of my relationship and then on the other side of that relationship being single again, you know, I think a lot of people, um, especially like me, like I was realizing things about myself and when you get out of one relationship, you try to jump right into another one. And I did just that. And I think a lot of times when you do that, you're not allowing yourself to process what just happened. But it's out of fear, you know, it, you don't want to be alone with yourself and work through the things that you're feeling. And it, in essence, you end up running away from yourself. And that's a really hard thing to uh, rec <laughs> like uh, acknowledge and um, own up to as a person. So this next song is uh, about just that. I actually wrote this. Uh, I think like it's eight years ago. So it was actually about something different, but um, in the scheme of this set of music, um, I kind of took a fresh take on what I'd written on the other side of this relationship and it actually works pretty well. So happy to share this with you. Just have to grab 
the electric guitar this time, so. This is called Run. I may have said it was going to get happier too soon, like way too soon. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, because it's just like, <sighs> you know, you have to like trudge through the shit to get to the happy song. So we're just going through like the learning experience and then you'll see. It's going to get happier, I promise. W woof indeed. Yeah, I know. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Mike was a monkey butt. Oh, just for that name alone, for making me say that out loud. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's happy, sad. It's uh, exactly. It's realizing things about yourself. And when, you, when that happens, you can only like get better every day. So 
Happy, sad, indeed. Uh, Kelly wants to stab us. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> so we can appreciate their... <laughs> uh, yeah, happy songs, like... I've always listened to really depressing stuff, and so I think that just rubbed off on me naturally. Like, I have... Uh, there's a band called Daughter, and she is, like, a huge... She made a huge impression on me. So a lot of my electric guitar stuff is very much uh, influenced by her. But the more acoustic we get in the future of this set, it will get a bit brighter. Because I will be towards my Scotland adventure, which I haven't even got into yet. But <laughs> we're not going to jump ahead. We're going to go in order. Um, what's the saddest song you know? Well... On the topic of Daughter, there's a song by Daughter called Medicine. And it's just, it's fucking sad. <laughs> um, if you <laughs> want to go listen to that, uh, maybe like wait until tomorrow after I've already bummed you out to, to listen to Daughter because it's, yeah, it's going to put you in a, it's going to put you in a place. <laughs> so, yeah. What's the reference? Eric, <laughs> what's the reference? <laughs> Not sure what you're referencing by your reference question. <laughs> um, well, happy or sad, you're great. Oh, thank you, Mike. Um, I missed a movie reference. I guess I missed a movie reference too. <laughs> Story of my life, though. I um, I've been staying with my friend Sean, who helps run Safe House, and. Uh, I tend to quote movies without realizing I'm quoting a movie. And he likes to tell me what movie I'm quoting, and then half the time I haven't seen them, and I'm just saying things that are quotes that I don't know. So I very well may quote movies during this. Please let me know if I do. Um, someone once told me real music makes you want to cry. I mean... I think both happy and sa sad music does have that effect on people. Like, if it hits you in the soul, of course it's going to make you cry. That's why there's happy tears, sad tears. Um, <laughs> what's my favorite Jonas brother? Mm, this is going to be a deep cut. Frankie Jonas, uh, the fourth Jonas brother, not in the band. So, ha. <laughs> uh, that is a long-running joke with friends because I used to like the Jonas Brothers and they like to explain everything to me in terms of the Jonas Brothers, even though I don't listen to them anymore. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> Indy Jonas. <laughs> I, that's not... Oh, okay. I got that joke now. <laughs> Delayed joke. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... <laughs> It's so hard to stay in the mood of sad songs <laughs> when there's really hilarious jokes on the screen. Um, so this next song is um, after I was done kind of running away from myself, I like decided I was going to uh, be alone for a while and kind of try to figure out what was going on. like. So that in the future I could have, like, you know, a successful relationship. And uh, as soon as I kind of, like, stopped trying to be with other people and, like, just acknowledge my own shit, I pretty much, it got, I, I went into a really dark place um, that I needed to go into to realize, like, on the other side of that was what I wanted was to uh, figure out these things about myself and grow as a person. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's always scary. Like, change is scary. And acknowledging parts about yourself that you don't necessarily like is scary. But I knew that I was trying to find a way to love myself. Um, because, you know, I think that was the real reason none of my relationships worked because when you don't love yourself, everything another person does that reminds you of the things you don't like about yourself, you're going to blame on them and you're going to look at them and go, oh, why are you like that? It's because you don't like that part of yourself. 
Um, and that's a hard pill to swallow as a person. So I spent some time alone and um, really worked through all that. And this song is uh, about kind of that really dark place I found doing it. Um, yeah, it's, it, this is called Starved of Cold. Shiver deep, loud and fast Breath is walking up the glass I prayed that you'd wipe clean Stopped of cold, concave lovers Hearts of gold bleed under covers of snow The blackest dark I've ever known One by one, dreams that can reach the sun, they haunt me awake. What if we were all the same? Lonely actors, different stage, plus that never dies. For a curtain that won't rise. One might think that I had died. saw during that song everyone is commenting on the visuals and I have to give a huge 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 shout out to Mike Williams and I did art direct but you know at the end of the day the guy producing the magic is Michael Williams so everyone in the chat better shout out and give him lots of clapping hand emojis <laughs> for me um yeah, it's, I wish I, I've seen what's behind me, but like, I wish I could be turning around while playing because it's so cool what he's done. Um, and I'm just so grateful to have these amazing visuals and lighting making me look so cool. <laughs> really helps because all the live streams I've done before this have been like, on a couch in a living room with that like really uh warm like house lighting that's pretty awful and you're just like i'm a musician yay <laughs> um but so this is like i haven't really performed like this since february because of covid so um thank you so much safe house for having me this is amazing i'm having so much fun um no this is not my living room and 
I don't actually have a living room. I'm in between homes right now. Um, <laughs> I was going to say at the beginning of this, I'm a singer-songwriter based, and then I realized I'm not based anywhere <laughs> right now, which is a funny thought. Um, but like Eric said, I'm moving to Scotland, and that is... Um, happening in like a month or so if I can even make a plan because every time I make a plan it changes because flights are like so up in there <laughs> no pun intended um so I'm just kind of waiting to see how lockdown in Scotland's going and then all the logistics stuff um but right now yeah I'm hanging out in Texas with my parents and my really cute dog and so I was like yeah Austin I'm gonna come to Austin um yeah, so s speaking of Scotland, good good segue, Kelly. Um, <laughs> this, oh, nope, <laughs> I forgot the order of my songs. Um, oh, it, it totally works. Uh, Scotland, I met these two amazing women, um, and I wrote this song for, for them and me to sing together, and I'm really excited to sing it by myself because it's, I mean, it's amazing with them, and I wish they were here because it sounds it sounds better. But uh, to sing it alone after all I've gone through this year is is a cool thing, and it's going to take on a different vibe. Um, but this was a song I wrote last year. I actually got stuck in Scotland last year because I was going there on like a one month exploratory move trip. And um, I was there in February, and then in March, um, my flight got canceled because of COVID. So I was like, what do I do? <laughs> I'm just here. I don't really know people other than the people I've met this month here. The hostels were going to close. I was just like, what does one do? Like, uh, luckily, I met a wonderful person. He actually like uh, allowed me to like stay with him and I was so thankful to have that living situation um or I would have I, yeah, I don't know what would have happened um but yeah I met these two uh ladies um wonderful musicians um Anna and MJ I doubt you're watching this because it's real early <laughs> where you're living um but I wrote the song in the middle of quarantine because I um, I posted on Facebook asking people if they wanted to reach out to me, I would write them a song if they gave me a topic for free, just for fun, um, because I had all the time in the world. Um, and uh, no, I've not practiced a Scottish accent and you will not hear it. It would destroy me as a person to try to do that right now um <laughs> trust me you don't want it um uh <laughs> so yeah people reached out via facebook and they were asking for songs and a friend of mine uh, Deidre she opened up to me about something really personal and um she wrote this long message and one of the words she talked about she used the phrase on the horizon and I just fell in love with that as a song uh, concept. And it w ended up being the perfect quarantine song because it's a, it's, it's a song about holding on to hope. On the other side of this song I just sang, holding on to hope after going through a dark time. And we are all going through a dark time um, with this pandemic and with many other things happening in the United States over the past year. Um, so this song was really cathartic for me to write because it acted as a ray of hope every time I sang it, and I, I think people felt that too. And I was just so happy to have asked people on Facebook for these prompts because it resulted in this beautiful song, and I never could have... <sighs> expected that to happen <laughs> Mike I'll be your therapist yeah I'll s I should start therapy <laughs> once I get my head screwed on but uh yeah this song I hope still resonates with you 
at the beginning of 2021. I think we are all hopeful um, that things can only go up from here. So this is on the horizon.
Thank you. Oh, yeah, dude. That's Flight Simulator. That's some crazy shit. No, we made, <laughs> we made that this morning, just flying about, you know? Um, beautiful, beautiful what uh, video games look like now. We didn't even have to shoot that <laughs> or find stock footage. Um, yeah. How long will Kelly be performing? I will be performing until about 9.15, 9.30. 30 seems more accurate now. And then there will be an interview that follows. Um, so stick around because the music will get happier. <laughs> but not yet. <laughs> um, thank you guys for hanging out. Is everyone just like chilling at home watching this? Anybody? <laughs> I guess that would be the only place. Uh, normal questions aren't normal anymore. Uh, yeah, no one's at a restaurant, hopefully, doing any sketchy COVID stuff. Um, where are we at with donations? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't have that information. Um, you're eating a burrito, Max? That sounds amazing. Um, now I'm hungry. I knew this would happen. Um, I'm in a crowded bar watching a live show. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, this is as close as you can get right now, safely. And live music just doesn't exist, unfortunately, right now. But it, it's for the best. So I'm happy to have this opportunity at all to be showing you all this new music because I wrote a lot during quarantine and it, it was an amazing time to be a musician but a horrible time otherwise because I mean it, it gave me like infinite time to work on music um, so I'm really happy I had that time to create music that I'm showing you right now um, describe the perfect burrito I gotta do that um, hmm. Perfect burrito to me is just like you got to get that ratio right, you know? You don't want too much beans. Like, if you're going to do like refried beans, you don't want to just take a bite and it's all beans. Um, the spicier, the better. Lots of cheese. Mm, probably chicken for me. And guac. Mmm. I sometimes like when they throw fries in there, like a California burrito, but that's when I'm getting real, like, trashy. <laughs> um, beans all the way down. I mean, yes, hopefully they're spread all the way down <laughs> and not just on the one half. <laughs> yeah, got to get that guac. I'm at the gym crying as I work out. You're, you're working out and listening to me? Wow. I feel like that's more effort than what I'm doing, and I applaud you. <laughs> Uh, green salsa? Yes. I mean, nine out of ten times the green salsa is better than red. I talk about this all the time. I don't even know you, and you just asked a question that, like, is pretty much uh, the most Kelly question to <laughs> ask me. <laughs> um, is also, that sounds like a philosophical statement. The perfect burrito is also a state of ingredients. I don't know what it means, but I think I love you. I don't know. <laughs> like, th uh, this is a lot of burrito talk, y'all. <laughs> the spiciest thing I've ever eaten. Um, I don't even know what the, I don't even know what the pepper was called, but I ate some pepper in somebody's greenhouse in Sweden last year, and it destroyed me. I don't know what it was called. So, but I love watching hot ones and stuff like that. I definitely, there was a, there's a wing challenge in Scotland at this place called Wings. And <laughs> I forgot it was called Wings before I started that sentence. Um, and I haven't done it yet, but when I go back, I plan to do it. And I'll report back. 
that might end up being the spiciest thing I've ever eaten, but I'm not sure yet. Um, thank you guys for hanging out. Listen to me, like, give a TED Talk, pretty much, about my life. <laughs> um, so th this next song, if I can find a place to put this, because I've been dropping it all day. Okay, I think that's going to stay. If it falls in the middle of my song, be sure to comment on that. Um, this next song is um, about sometimes in life you meet people, I think, at very <laughs> specific times for them to reflect back to you. Um, things you need to learn about yourself and also that inspire you and make you take a, take a leap of faith for yourself just by seeing how they see you, you know? And um, I met someone in Scotland who um, was busking on the street the first time I went there. And I, if you don't know what busking is, because my mother doesn't, and I had to explain. Shout out, Lori Nichols. Uh, <laughs> Um, busking is like pretty much being a street performer, so you can just set up anywhere and put your guitar case out um, and start singing and see if people give you money. So I'm, I met a guy doing that in Edinburgh when I was walking around. I was actually like lost. And um, I, I've seen buskers before. There was this amazing busker in San Francisco that I would walk by all the time. Um, but for some reason this found me at the proper time. I was like already singing at pubs in um, Scotland before COVID happened. And I, I don't know, I was like, something about it called out to me. So I ended up talking to him. And through that interaction, it gave me the confidence to pretty much quit my full-time job of freelance editing and go to Scotland to pursue music because I met people that are doing it full time. And I was like, if I don't do this, I know I'll regret it and I have to try, even if it means singing on the street for money. And that's why I'm moving to Scotland to do that still. Um, not much has changed, but this next song's about, yeah, meeting people who reflect light back to you and make you realize that you are capable of doing things, you know? Like sometimes you need that extra little push and then you can find it in yourself. Um, yeah, this one's called Incandescent Bodies. Come 
This is in Austin. <laughs> Hi, Montana Street. <laughs> um, oh, I feel like I missed a lot of comments, but I sing with my eyes closed a lot, and it probably would make me mess up if I tried to read while I was singing. But thank you, guys. That's one of my favorite new songs I've written. <laughs> um. Yeah, so after having met this person who like reflected things back to me, I, I took that leap of faith for myself and decided to, you know, like go after what I want in life. And it was terrifying because I, like I said, I, I pretty much stopped being an editor. Um, at least I was like, okay, I'm going to put editing on the back burner and just see if I can do this, you know, and go from there. Um, and um, I, the month I was there before COVID in February, the music scene in Scotland is it, so hard to put into words because it's such a like soul experience. Uh, the first time I went there, it just called to me, and the people are so welcoming. You know, like, I'm not singing Scottish, tra uh, like, traditional music here, obviously. But, you know, they uh, they invited me to sing regardless, and I, I just loved the community, how open it was. And I a lot of my music is more contemporary folk, and then I do indie stuff um, with the electric, but... I was just so happy to find a home in Scotland to do music and and an avenue that actually seemed, you know, like realistic that I could do it because, you know, everyone is going to tell you not to follow your dream, your art, because usually like it doesn't in their eyes pay the bills, but there's always a way if you're willing to go for it and like make a risk, you know, because I I went to Scotland with a lot of credit card debt and I was pretty much eliminating my one source of income and that was scary, but I knew it was worth the risk and that I, I could get myself out of it on the other end and that my happiness <laughs> was far more important. 
And I just, if I can say anything while doing this right now because of the time we're in, don't give up on your art. I know this is a hard time for music. This is a hard time to monetize your career, especially with music because there's no live performances really. You can't gig, which is usually your source of income, but <laughs> use this time to better your craft so you can come out the other side and just, I don't know, just, I don't know, shine, you know, like it, take as many opportunities as you can safely, but until then, keep writing, keep working on it, don't give up on what you love. Yeah, <laughs> I'll end there, I think that's good. <laughs> um, thank you, Jack Jack for the $10 tip, and Purple Bee TV, thank you guys so much. I actually haven't even seen the, like, the glowy ball thing that's going on below me. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for doing that. I bet it, I saw it earlier and it looks really cool. Um, all right. Um, we're coming up to the last song of this part of my set. So my set tonight's in two parts. I'm going to sing this last song and then we're going to take like a very short intermission just to switch a few things around and then I'm going to come back and do six more songs and then the interview. So stick around. There's a lot more to hear. I'm going to try to not knock over the glowy balls real fast. <laughs> And I nailed it. How do you know about Nichols Pickles? Who is too many birds? <laughs> I just like that I don't know who you are and you're making specific references, so it must be someone I'm close to. <laughs> um. The lighting got really dramatic. Um, this song is another uh, COVID song. It's another hopeful song, but it's it's about uh, finding home, which is a word that has a lot of meanings. But I'm not talking about the physical one or the or the sense of like belonging in a location rather. I'm talking about a sense of wholeness within yourself. Um, that can be found if you go searching for it. <laughs> but it's funny because the word searching isn't even the right word because you've had it all along. And so uh, this song is about rediscovering yourself and that home within you. This is called Less Troubled Times. Lead me to less troubled times To the day your heart sees this fire When you raise that white flag high Oh, lead me to the morning light. I'm coming home. I don't know why. It took me so damn long to recognize that what's inside of this heart guides me and leads me to this troubled times times lead me to this troubled day
single time. Welcome to the Edinburgh, Scotland busking portion of this set. Whoop, whoop. So now, in addition to all the excitement of donating, if you donate, someone will walk into shot and put actual, live, real money into the case, like actual busking. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> We, we got it all <laughs> figured out here, obviously. Um, <laughs> if that's something you want to do, uh, go for it. Otherwise, I'm just happy you guys are listening. Um, so this, this portion is a bit more casual. Like, when you're busking on the street, you kind of like, people are walking by and they're not really looking to hear you, you know. So when you mess up and stuff, you're just like, eh. No one cares. So I'm going to probably treat that like this <laughs> because I'm throwing myself a few curveballs with some of the music I'm about to play for you that is not like one. I literally just finished it this week. So <laughs> we're, we're approaching the less polished busking part of this session. Um, but yeah. Um, yes, busking. B-U-S-K. Not, I don't know, maybe my pronunciation was sounding like busting, <laughs> I don't know, busting, busting a move, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Thanks, Bird Circus. <laughs> you weren't lying <laughs> about your donation um, method. I like it. Yeah, busting. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so this part, I don't, I'm probably going to stop the TED Talk portion of this journey. <laughs> so if you have any questions, like random questions for me, uh, in between songs would be the time to ask them. And we can just have like a conversation if anyone has any lingering questions for me. Otherwise, I'm just going to sing my little heart out. And yeah. I'm going to go into this first song, which is a great intro song for the Edinburgh part of this set, because it is about busking, and it's about Edinburgh. So here we go.
<laughs> or something like that. It's really dope when there's a fiddle here. You said we won't meet again. Here's two pounds to never spend. Keep them with you till you're old and gray. And with that, I'm on my way. And my heart is nowhere to be found. So I try and search the fun. Busking songs are a lot more usually upbeat and loud because a lot of times you're not amplified. So you either like sing covers that are pretty belty or you have to, I wrote that song pretty high in my voice because in the first set, some of those songs when they're really low, I no one would hear that. Like they would just hear the guitar and they'd be like, mm, nothing. Nothing to see here. <laughs> um, he was a busker boy. Yeah. <laughs> Should have wrote it. <laughs> Just did a parody of Skater Boy. <sighs> Missed opportunities. Um, yeah. How's everyone doing? Still hanging in there? Still having a good time? I saw something about this pint is for you, Kelly. Ah, thank you. Um, and scotch for the safe house crew. Is everyone drinking? <laughs> Guys, yeah, do it. Um, cool. <laughs> it's really hard to sit on a stool. <laughs> a chuck a pint on stream. Mm. I don't know. I don't think you want want me burping during songs. That would be a little too real. Okay. Here's the next song. This one's called Nothing But Time. It's because we have a lot of that right now. All right. Make this hard on you Wanna keep from playing with fire too Not looking to be burnt But the edges are sharper than they seem Strike a match and watch them as they gleam I don't wanna hurt you but all I know is I'm happy I'm not alone. We don't have to call this home. But if you did, I wouldn't mind. You see, I think about you all the time. Darling, we have all the time. to know if I'm 
If nothing happened, but all I know is I'm happy I'm not alone. We don't have to call this home. But if you did, I wouldn't mind. You see, I think about. Is I'm happy. We don't have to call this home. We don't have to call this home. But if you did, I wouldn't mind. You see, I think about you all the time. Darling, we have all the time. Thank you guys for the tips. It's so fun to see people walk on stage. At first I was like, Sean, what are you doing? You're getting in the wide shot, man. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> uh, uh, this song has camera obscura vibes. I've never listened to them. I'll have to check them out. I mean, I've been to a camera obscura. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anybody else's. Okay, scotch was being poured right at this moment. Sounds good. Trying to remember what comes next is fun. They have a song, Let's Get Out of This Country. Um, <laughs> that reminds me, uh, when I, so, my, you've heard like pieces of what I've been doing in terms of moving, but um, like before the whole Scotland thing, I was I was in North Hollywood, and so w right now I'm in Texas. So I drove from North Hollywood to Texas recently, and before I did, I was kind of getting rid of all my stuff, and um, I went to Goodwill to donate a lot of it, and it was really funny when I was there. Um, the girl in front of me was talking about how she was moving to Canada, and I was like, oh, hey, that's funny. I'm also moving out of the country. I'm moving to Scotland. And then the two guys working at the Goodwill were like, you guys are like the 10th person today to say you're moving out of the United States. What's going on? And I was like, well, <laughs> what isn't going on? So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, oh, no, that's a bad omen. <laughs> Eric, save me. I kicked the donation shut. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. I knew I would do something with this set. Um, but yeah, let's get out of this country. That reminded me of that story. All right. Let's see what's next. Oh, so fun story here that I haven't mentioned. One of my um, side music projects right now is um, writing a musical and 
the musical kind of covers a lot of the things I was talking about in the first half of the set, kind of just like following the things I've learned. And I'm still very much working on it, but I wanted to premiere a new song that I literally just finished this week. Um, so you can get a flavor of my musical, which is called, working title, <laughs> Evolution of a Girl. And um, yeah, Kelly Nichols on Ice. Um, I mean, there's still time to change it. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've always wanted to, I, I started writing this musical about um, people on roller skates because I used to be a <laughs> roller skating car hop at Sonic. That was like my first high school job. Um, and trust me, uh, it's just as bad as me ice skating. So I don't think you, anyone wants to see that. It would be a lot of falling, a lot of swearing. Um, but uh, where's my scotch? Uh, I don't need scotch. Her agent will be pissed. Are you my agent, Mike? I don't have one, but you're more than welcome to uh, pony up if you want. Um, this song from my musical is kind of like similar to um, in the first half when I talked about like kind of deciding to be alone and w working through <laughs> your shit. It's called Better Off Alone. Um, and it's like the character recognizing that she keeps falling into the same like patterns of like codependency and stuff and uh, deciding to like empower herself. So d do you have the coin waist belt too? Oh, I'm trying to think what that's in reference to. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, cat. I don't know what you're referencing. Um, are you trying like a fanny pack? because I own fanny packs. Um, but yes, while you maybe, oh, roller skates. Oh, oh, Sonic, Sonic. I I did have like an apron kind of waist belt thing going on. Yeah, where you can like give people change and press the little buttons to release the quarters. It was real sexy, trust me. Uh, it's like one of those coming of age uh, high school movies where the like kind of awkward nerdy girl is having her first high school job and then like slushies herself that that was me <laughs> um, so now that you have that visual <laughs> here's uh, better off alone <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. So that's a little preview of one of the songs. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for finishing that musical. Uh, one of my longer term goals with Scotland is they have this festival called Fringe Fest and it's a lot of comedy, and plays, musicals, and um, you can submit original musicals and see if you can get like a venue and yeah, my goal is to finish writing it, hopefully this year, and uh, put it on its feet either uh, probably next year at Fringe Fest or um, this year maybe in a smaller like workshop capacity. But yeah, uh, a lot of I have a lot of the music, but the plot still kind of I'm finding the in-betweens of the songs. So yeah, happy to share you part of that tonight. <laughs> Um, definitely will have a piano and a lot more instruments if you can use your imagination to what that would sound like. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh my gosh. I'm totally blanking on what songs remain. <laughs> oh, yep. I remembered one. Um... <laughs> I have a lot of like, <laughs> I don't know if you haven't noticed, I, I kind of my songwriting's all over the place, you know, like I have this like indie thing going and then I I have this like folk thing going and, um, and a musical. So you're getting a little bit of everything. And uh, I actually am a part of a folk band in Scotland. Um, if you're interested in seeing like what a, it's a male female duo plus a violin player. We're going to start posting more content right now. We don't really have anything um, with the three of us. Uh, but we, we've we written a lot of original music, and a lot of my time in Scotland will be focused on that in addition to my side projects. But um, that band's called Peaks and Valleys Duo. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Um, Peaks and Valleys Duo on um, Instagram and... Facebook, and if you want to um, follow my musical, it doesn't have anything posted yet. Maybe I'll post the song I just sang. Um, it's Evolution of a Girl Musical on Instagram as well. If I could get to star, or 
get one star to be in my musical, who would you choose? Oh boy, that's hard. Um, that's a thinker, Steve-O. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to think who could maybe play me in my musical, <laughs> which would be entertaining. Um, uh, there's this movie, I don't know this actress's name, but it's a movie called um, Wild Rose. It's really good. Uh, she was also in this um, Kaufman film that just came out on Netflix. She's like an incredible actress. She kind of has like a folk vibe going because um, she sings in the movie I'm talking about. But I mean, in terms of like Broadway stars, people know. Uh, I, I love Jonathan Groff, but I don't know if he would fit in my musical. <laughs> He's, if you don't know who that is, uh, he voices a character in Frozen. He's in a show called um, A Serial Killer Show on Netflix, uh, The Mind Hunter. Um, I mean, Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> These people don't fit in my musical, but I just want to work with them at some point. Is the actress Danny DeVito? Um, no, <laughs> that is not her name. <laughs> but if Danny DeVito sings, he can totally be in my musical. Um, Meryl Streep, classic musical choice. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, this is one of my more like folky, uh, semi-country even like songs that I've written. Um, it's called A Place to Land. this heart of mine that leaves me longing for tomorrow praying for every drop of rain make me wish that I had never even there to learn your name darling please believe me I'm doing to land Beg or steal or borrow If it would rid me of the sorrow But you're an honest man And I'm not looking to be branded can't 
Thanks, Kat. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you for liking the song. And Eric, it's your favorite? Aw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely uh, the most like country I've got in me. I think beyond that, I'll stick with the folk music, but I like to, like, border between the two, like, a little, just a little twang sometimes. Um. Um, has that been five songs? Okay, thank you for keeping track for me. Um, so, this is going to be the last song, unless... I do my encore, perhaps for free, <laughs> because I want to sing it kind of anyway, so I may just do it for shits and giggles. Um, but <laughs> that's not really motivating, um, because then now you know I'm going to just do it. <laughs> it's fine. I'm <laughs> only 300 more. Yeah, I will probably just sing it for you for being so sweet. Um, this song is called Stay, and yeah, I hope you like it. Changing scenery, passing glances is all it ever will be. But you noticed I walk through life differently, and now you're gone. Discretions as we whisper. 
Thank you so much for that donation, Kat. And thank you, Eric. For <laughs> <laughs> Always a pleasure. Um, am I breaking the rules if I play it anyway? Play it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're just going to do it because I just, I want to sing it. And so, and I'm just thankful for any money to receive. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, this song is kind of like my, <laughs> I wrote this song for myself. I, it was like kind of during my whole like female empowerment <laughs> phase. Um, <laughs> but it's like the most kind of like commercial poppy song I have. Um, and it's pretty much inspired from me working at Twitch uh, with John and a lot of the people in the chat. Uh, because, I mean, it, it's called single player game. Uh, so it's like video game influenced, nerd culture influenced. Um, but I just thought it was a cute way of like talking about being single and yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah, think if this is, this is the last song. So thank you guys so much and like if you wanna stick around and listen to the interview. I'm going to talk some more about myself with Eric. And yeah, um, big thank you to the whole Safe House team. They worked so hard putting this together. And thank you, Mike, for the motion graphics. You guys have put in so many hours for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm beyond grateful for this, ex this experience and for how amazing this show looks um, and to be a part of an evolving safe house. Um, so yeah, I hope you like this last song, single player game. Now's the time to rewrite this Before the curtains close Feel the fire burn inside of me Like everybody knows What does it take me getting hurt to Remember what I'm really worth I think it's time I put me first So I back and don't think twice not look into the, your advice I want to be my only kryptonite and I chase thunder not just rain done holding on to all this pain I'm ready for a single player game yeah I Ready for a single player game. I'm ready. Follow suit like a diamond. I'm bare. Cause I'm too bright, it be blinding And I'm not looking to be found 
so tired of reaching up to put my heart back on that shelf. I think I'd rather love myself. So I bounce back and don't think twice, not looking to hear your advice. I want to be my only kryptonite. Thank you guys so much. Stick around for the interview. And just thank you so much for all the donations tonight and for hanging out the whole entire time and listening to all this new music. Can't wait to see you guys in person when we can again. All right, friends of the internet, we are back. Thank you all for hanging with us, kicking off our 2021 Safe House Sessions with Kelly Vi Kelly Nichols. Nichols Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh that? What gosh. is that? I, I don't even know. It's a long inside joke about if I had a pickle company, it would obviously be called Nichols Pickles. It is yet to come to fruition, but there's still time. It's probably for the best, though. It's that, sounds like a classic, that sounds like a classic Sean Green joke right oh, there. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, and that's all you really need to know about it. Yeah, well, I think that uh, I, I think that we could not have asked for a better way to start our uh, 2021 shows. You know, it's like working in this live streaming space. Uh, you know that it's not just about performance. Yeah. Right. And um, it's 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 nice to see somebody work the digital audience <laughs> like you did tonight. Oh, thank you. Is this something that you? you do you do you do uh, you've done this on Facebook or are you somebody hosting you or are you working on somebody have you streamed on somebody else's channel before this sh this show? Honestly, I've only done like two or three Facebook lives. I don't have a lot of experience with this kind of medium of performing, so that's why I'm so interested to do it. Um, but yeah, this was my first time kind of interacting with a chat audience while doing music. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I saw, I was just, I was actually telling Sean, I uh, I saw you, uh, I think I met you in like 2013 or 14. Probably. Yeah, a long time. And um, like seeing your personality come out tonight was like not the person I remember uh. at all back 
back then. You were just like quiet and timid and, and yeah. not, I don't know. I don't mean timid. No, no, I mean, that's timid not negative. Way, but like quiet, kind of introverted. Mm-hmm. And, um, totally. Hearing you and hearing your voice was just like, it's, it's the same person. <laughs> like, it was really kind of surreal. Yeah. I mean, since you met me, I it's been kind of like... Uh, rediscovering like I said like that part of myself because I was telling Sean like I I feel like I'm an introvert extrovert hybrid um and depending on social situations certain vibes come out but yeah the more I like kept uh kind of exploring um the things I was talking about on the show in regards to myself the more I find this part of myself coming out more freely and less like worried about like you know people judging you so you you filter less and become more who i actually am well you start to do it a little bit and i learned this with karaoke is how i got to be <laughs> like a like singer you yeah know, like singer yeah, yeah it's like um your introduction into that is like oh man this is very liberating and like you 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 gain to benefit so much from it and really no, you know, what's what's really the worst that can... It's like, why have I been holding this back? I don't know how long you've been. Mm-hmm. Were you a musician when we met eight years ago? Yeah, so I I actually grew up uh, doing music since middle school. I, I was in choir for 10 years. And then when it came to go to, like, college, I was like, I don't want to be a choir teacher. I didn't think I was good enough to pursue music independently. And so I kind of just went the editing route and... Honestly, it was like a five-year departure from music, and then it came back because I think it's always what I wanted to do. I just had to believe in myself that mm-hmm. I could do it, and just taking steps every day to try to do it. So this was not that difficult. Like the singing part, the performance part was never that difficult for you. But you maybe weren't writing songs when you were younger. I I wrote songs since high school. Okay. Um, on guitar. On guitar. Okay. I I feel that I'm more a like well I'm definitely a singer songwriter but I I've never been like an instrumentalist okay. I only know enough to really like accompany myself sure. um so like my longer term goal with this is to find like a producer who could then like add other things because yeah, yeah. I hear lots of other stuff for my music Right, it'll help to have the band when you get to Scotland, I'm sure. Yeah, that, exactly. That's a different vibe, uh, but it's already exciting for me because, you know, we have, like, a guitar, I, I play piano, and then we have a, a fiddle player, and mm-hmm. so it's starting to fill itself out and feel more like what I want to do. Yeah, I, I it's it's excellent, and this is something that I don't really know about as, like, a singer. is like, you know, you're playing along to your chords, but... Um, Expressing your range, like, over these chords is something that, in my mind as a singer, I can't really imagine that. And I feel like, in a lot of ways, you really kind of only, like, learn that from hearing other people do it. And I don't want to be so obvious as, like, who are your influences, but it's I, I think it's interesting that you have, like, a... a broad Broadway background, I guess, that I didn't really know a whole lot about, from, like... Broadway to folk music is, is <laughs> a pretty wide wide range of influence. Yeah, I, you know, I, I um, in addition to choir in high school, I was in a bunch of productions. Um, and then I continued doing musical theater after college. And kind of when I was in L.A., my way back into music was I got cast in a musical called Dogfight, as the lead and then that reminded me like oh yeah music was the thing I wanted to do and so it was kind of me tip- dipping my toes again but yeah I uh, I have like a lot of I know a lot of musicals I in terms of folk music my inspirations are this uh, folk duo called the Civil Wars and oh, they're, yeah. okay. they're no longer together mm-hmm. but they too are independent um, they're always my number one and like uh, a lot of the reason why I'm excited about the folk band I'm creating because I saw them live and I was just like I want to do that Mm -hmm. you know like a male female vocalist kind of thing and write music and make people feel things so and then indie like I said during the show like daughter sticks out as the main influence for me um Amy Winehouse is a big Mm -hmm. influence Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of people 
I'm I'm blanking on right, right. now. Well, yeah, like I said, I, I, you have you have a wonderful voice, and I, I would not have pictured that coming from you when I first <laughs> met you. Because I didn't I didn't you know, I didn't really know you that, that yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It was like kind of in passing too. But mm-hmm. uh, it's great that we got to connect like this before you I know. you go on to. You, do you have any idea when you're going to be? Yeah, I mean, I'm shooting for kind of like end of February, mid March for my flight. Okay. It depends on a lot of factors, but that seems to be probably the one timing. Way, one way ticket to Scotland. Yeah, one way ticket to so Scotland. So you were there. You were there for eight months before. Yeah, I. I mean, I went in February of last year, and then I was there until like June or July and then I I went to Sweden with a friend for a month and a half and then I came back to Edinburgh so it ended up being a little over six months um, total in the year last year in Edinburgh and yeah I had no idea like I would go to Sweden or any of these things during COVID um, which was interesting because they're like just fully open Mm -hmm. and um, but luckily I had a really nice family and it was in a very small village so it felt very like safe (laughs) <laughs> in in Sweden or in Scotland? In Sweden. Why so? Why Scotland? What was the connection there? Well, uh, Scotland was where I originally went um, on this solo trip. I went almost a year and a half ago. Any reason for Scotland in particular? <laughs> People ask me that, and I yeah. like, it's kind of <laughs> a horrible answer, but I. I wanted to go somewhere like scenic, and my number one was New Zealand, and I couldn't afford that, so sure. Scotland was yeah, yeah. the affordable one, right. but I'm so happy it ended up that way, because it was like, the, the music scene there was like, pretty much exactly what I was looking for without knowing I was looking for it, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, Scot- is, Scot- is Scotland in the EU? Uh, no, not anymore. Okay. As of? As of December. Oh, they're part of Brexit. the UK then? Yeah. Yeah, they're part okay. of the UK. Okay, I didn't realize that Scotland was an extension of the UK, so they're yeah, all, they're on the pound too, then. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. Okay, so that <laughs> makes that I didn't realize that that was that closely connected with the United Kingdom. Oh yeah, so that yeah, makes definitely. it a little like it seemed a little exotic to me <laughs> in my mind. It's little? it's less exotic. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. That transition makes sense though. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we are taking questions. It seems like you have some friends uh, watching right now. So anybody has any questions for Kelly? And we are uh, we're still t- taking donations up until midnight uh, Central Time tonight. If you want to help us uh, hit our donation goal, um, if we hit it at midnight, we're going to go get Kelly out of bed and bring her back and get everybody back <laughs> in here and bring them in. Oh, my gosh. Um, but no, really, uh, donations to midnight, We're gonna the, the Streamlabs link is up in there. If um, you want to follow that seven dollar suggested donation, um, she's got big plans, big life changes. I'm <laughs> sure she could use any of the scratch that you can afford uh, to get her on the road. Um, so yeah, if not, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us tonight. And if you do have any questions, wherever you are watching from, or any comments, or any feedback, or any uh, you know any love you want to send. Her way and our way now is the time to do so. Um, Kat, I, I've gathered as a friend of yours, yeah? Yes. Uh, is this Kat in Arizona? Yes. Okay. I've only right? heard, I've only heard of <laughs> Kat. Like hey, still, Kat. Still in Arizona? Um, I, I think so. Kelly, can you just, the gas station, the best gas station from L.A. to Austin. Oh, I know. I read this one already, and I was like, I have... No answer for that. Really? Like, I nothing sticks out to me, and that's like the most lame answer. But I'm trying to think. I mean, they're baiting you. I feel like they're like, no, you don't remember that one that we went to. Yeah. Well, luckily I know that cat and I didn't go to any gas station, so I feel safe in my answer. But um, I don't know <laughs> any gas station really that has like, I don't know. Gas. Gas. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't what I was gonna say, <laughs> but that's yeah, I like that answer. There's a good stretch from like El Paso to basically like I don't know uh, uh, San Angelo. Okay. Where there's like a gas station every like a hundred miles. <laughs> it's, like, oh. it's like if you can really be in, yeah. in like a bad situation, <laughs> like in the West, uh, if you don't. Um, you're getting a, oh Sinclair is that the is that the uh, is that the dinosaur gas station in Pee Wee's Big Adventure? 
You know, you know, you know. No, I don't. No? I'm like, <laughs> it's a very specific reference. Yeah. Um, I was on the way when I drove from LA to Texas, though, there was this one gas station that my mom and I stopped at. And she just told me yesterday, she's like, you know that gas station you like walked in and gave him a 20 and I was like, I don't think you paid him enough for the gas. We got that gas for free. Like, well, I like paid with the credit card $20 and like it never got charged to a card. So whatever gas station that was. That's the one. That's the one. Maybe they're watching right now. <laughs> Thanks Pretty for cool. the free gas. That nev- that nev- how does that even happen? I don't know. Yeah. I was just like, uh, well, we're not driving back right, <laughs> like right. to sort this out. Right. But maybe I'll pay it forward later for someone uh, else. How many times have you made that drive? Um, well, growing up, we used to do that drive to go visit my grandparents. So maybe I only remember like a handful of times growing up. But that was the first time as an adult. And luckily, my mom wanted to tag along. So I had someone to switch off with. All right on. Yeah. Um, too many birds. Kelly, what are you going to miss most when you go? Huh. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm living with my my parents and my <laughs> my dog um, right now, so like spending a lot of time with them before leaving is really gonna like uh, emphasize the gut punch yeah. that moving is gonna be because it's when I left before I left from LA and I don't know it feels a lot more up close and personal this way, so I have to say my parents and my my dog, Sandy, because she's an old lady. Shout out, Sandy. Yeah. The dog, if you're watching at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sandy. Um, um, well, um, this, this uh, Samantha is asking a question that I'm curious about uh-huh. uh, as well. You know, like, I notice your range. Do you – I saw you out here rehearsing earlier. Um mm-hmm. Do you work songs into your set that you have to, like, I'm not putting this song early in the set because my voice won't be ready for it yet? Is that something that you are mindful of when yeah, you're writing your set list? I definitely, like, started with the song that I've sang the most and I'm the most comfortable with because I know going in I'm going to have, I'm still at the point where I have jitters um, singing. And it's been since February since I've done this. So I was like, okay, let's play this smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's definitely songs that like are higher in my voice and I, <laughs> that are really belty, you know, weird, weird part. So I, I definitely put them near the end or I'm just aware of them. And we, yeah, you saw me outside. I was just warming up my voice for mm-hmm. those moments. I, cause I know that's where if I'm not warmed up, it's just going to go Right. Yeah, it's just going to go off. Right, right. Um, which one do you enjoy the most to sing? Stylistically. Um, I definitely, the stuff I'm doing with electric guitar, at least for like my solo kind of stuff, aside from my folk band, is what's interesting me the most currently. Uh, and I just want to explore that more, just because it brings out a different style of songwriting that I haven't really oh, tapped right. into. Yeah, sure, sure. That makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. Do you? Yeah, that's interesting. You're trying. You're really covering a lot because I was going to ask you why you, why you have a uh, <laughs> black Les Paul. I mean, how did you decide on that? I mean, I've had that since high school, and yeah. the only reason it's here right now is because I was at my parents' house, and it's yeah. just been sitting there. Okay. And, like, and I was since I left my acoustic in Scotland, mm-hmm. so. Shout out Kirby for letting me use his beautiful Martin guitar tonight. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that was why I was like coming here initially thinking I had to do the whole set with an electric, right. and I was like, oh, this is gonna be weird. Cause right, right. <laughs> so I'm so grateful to have acoustic. But yeah, I'm trying to because I have it now with me. I'm like, oh, I should start writing more on this. Yeah, I, I was hoping you were gonna say uh, you. You might not hear it a lot in my music, but my actually like biggest influence is like Ace Frehley from Kiss. <laughs> and like, <laughs> like, you know, I just think he has like a cool guitar. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that's that's great. I mean, it's a. Uh, You've got a lot of ways that you can go with what you're doing. I know. Um, I think it's interesting that you're you're going to have uh, uh, other players with you. That's that's going to introduce a whole other I dynamic. Know. But um, no, I mean, there's there's 
endless electric and acoustic possibilities. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's cool. Um, I appreciate that you have like a a broad range. I, 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 I'm familiar with some of the like dronier. Actually, our sound guys like really, you know, into like like kind of droney guitar mm-hmm. based kind of songwriter stuff. Like that's that's becoming more of a popular thing than I yeah. feel like it has been in the past. As a uh, uh, you know, people that aren't necessarily into the at times traditionally one dimensional. Uh, element sometimes associated with like singer songwriters and folk writers yeah. and stuff like that so it's cool that people are experimenting with that a lot more than i think that they have in the past as far as i know yeah um, <laughs> but uh i mean yeah with your voice is like well there's a lot of things you can sing over you know yeah it's been like a weird like ever since i started singing and now i feel like what you're talking about i'm kind of at a crossroads with my style because i'm like the lower part of my voice lends itself to like more indie kind of stuff, I think. And then when I go higher, it, it is very like belty musical theater or like, um, I don't know. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of different like ways I see I can utilize my voice, but I'm not sure which one is like the best for me. I think I'll hone in on that Mm -hmm. when I go to Scotland Mm -hmm. and I don't know, find my voice still, still, still searching for it, you know? Very exciting. Um, so I wanted to ask you about like s- physical music because yeah, you haven't formally recorded in a studio at this point, right? No, I'm kind yeah. of the worst musician because honestly, like most of the stuff I played tonight is not recorded properly. I haven't found the right producer or studio yet, and I'm hoping when I go to Scotland, I can find somebody mm-hmm. to collaborate with right. to to get actual like professional recordings. Right. Um, so I can be a bit more, like, you know, promote myself well. Right. Well, I mean, in some ways, you know, because you, 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 you've had these songs for a while, but how, many, how long have you been performing solo? Le- two years? Less than two years? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a, a little over a year and a half, yeah. I just started doing this again. So, um, yeah, it's very fresh and new for me, and I'm just getting to the point where I'm starting to feel comfortable again, and mm-hmm. even then, it's, like, going to take a lot more performances to really just, f- for it to be muscle memory again mm-hmm. for me. Sure. Well, I think with playing with other people and getting more comfortable recording, you're probably saving yourself a lot of time and a lot of money by not actually going through the studio process right now yeah until you know exactly what you want to do yeah with having these three different kind of sounds yeah it would be a waste of money to go into a studio and like be like i don't know who i am i don't know what i want to put out to the world like that would be a bit like backwards i think well that comes with experience and i'm sure the more you like perform and maybe have like video content or you know of of sort of like uh, like tapes, you know, like s- they do in sports. It's like, well, you need to go back and watch a playback and like yeah. what worked here today and what didn't work, you know. Yeah. Um, That's why this is so great because, I mean, I can go back and watch and s- see mm-hmm. exactly that mm-hmm. and maybe it will give me some clarity on my music and if not, I have just really banging videos of yeah, my music. Yeah, right on. <laughs> well, the feedback was great tonight. Um, yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, so you're, you're leaving Austin tomorrow? I am after the barbecue. What have you been doing in Dallas? Uh, you know, it's been a lot of like staying indoors because Tarrant County in particular is like not doing great with COVID right now. So okay. trying to get, stay safe. Uh, I'm working on my musical mostly like because I have all this spare time and yeah, just uh, kind of hanging out with my family, <laughs> watching a lot of like uh, Expedition Unknown. Do you know that show? No. It's like a Discovery Channel show. A Discovery Channel, like, adult Discovery Channel? Yeah, like, okay. yeah. My dad's, like, obsessed with it. Uh, I thought you were talking about, like, Dora the Dora, it. Dora or something. Dora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really into Dora the Explorer right now. <laughs> Learning um, a lot. Uh, so your dad's, your dad's a what? He's just really into that show, so he's gotten me into it, because it's, like, pretty much, like, people who, unsolved mysteries and, like, treasure, like, hunting type stuff. Okay. <laughs> is it so with a lot of these shows it's like 
it's 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 not really made to be educational as much as it's made to be entertaining. Is this one of those shows? It's not. Uh, it, it's a little bit of both. It, it, they actually do, I feel like I am learning a little bit when I'm watching it, but they definitely have those like really scripted, like, oh, oh drama, yeah. we're yeah. keeping you watching this because we know that otherwise you may right. switch the channel. So yeah. we, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I have a, I have a problem with that because like, I, I, <laughs> if I'm going to go like mindless, I got to go like completely, Full mindless? yeah. Yeah, you don't like, go in the bit between area no. where it starts becoming like is questionable. My, am I learning? <laughs> yeah. Is that true or is that just good TV? <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll go. I'll, I'll go like triple D's. Like, you know, oh, okay. like I just need full, to go full like on reality driver, TV drivers, show. Dinins and mm-hmm. guy. You know, you know guy, right? <laughs> yeah, guy. <laughs> so uh, no, I, I um, that's. I mean, I do watching TV with your dad. It's great though. Yeah, it's just a lot of that. It's really chill. That's why this is exciting because I was like. Uh, yeah, watch TV at home, write my musical, or drive to Austin right. and do live show. I think I'm yeah. going to go do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, uh, are they watching right now, you think? You think? Um, my mom said she was going to watch, but I think she's being like a little shy human and won't post in the chat. Okay. So I'll, I'll call her later. Right on. <laughs> uh, Samantha Macarioli. 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 Macaroni. Ma- do you know this person? Yeah, she's one of okay. my so <laughs> really I'll closest ma- friends. I'll let you make fun of her last name. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, no one can pronounce it. So can I you try are, it again? Not, yeah, try again. Uh, Macariola. It's close, I, Ma- I think. You don't even know it? Well, I feel like it's Macariola, but I, m- I may be mispronouncing it because I'm just Americanizing like yeah. the shit out of it. I don't know <laughs> at this tell point. You're not going to tell me they're from Scotland, right? No, <laughs> no. Um... Well, I can answer her question, though. Uh, first experience busking, thoughts and feelings as you perform. Um, well, first experience busking was, uh, like I said, in the set uh, with uh, this guy I met who, <laughs> who was um, busking. And then we ended up doing it together. So, uh, But the first time I did busking alone was in February. I pretty much was every day busking before COVID happened. Um, and, you know, it, like doing it the first time alone was really scary, but it ended up being really like cathartic and freeing because you realize like no one gives a fuck and right. then music becomes just like less scary and more about what it's supposed to be about. I, I'm really hoping that <laughs> a big thing that people are re- learning from COVID is, you know, as like death is staring everybody in the face right now yeah that the people that do that are fortunate to enough to come out of this are going to be like i'm so not going to do the things that i worried about before that are like what is the point in like holding back nobody really gives a shit about what you're doing like just just do it you know it's like totally who's really going to what kind of person is really Going, and I'm kind of telling myself this. Like, <laughs> what kind of person is really going to like be mean about you busking or like trying yeah. something? It's just getting out of the way of yourself, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it's one of the like uh, silver linings of the pandemic is it, it is like a reminder of the impermanence of life, if you will, like uh, that you should like any time you can die like that sounds really morbid but it's just the truth and if you live life that way you'll live a fuller life if and because I know a lot of people um you know you save money to then live your life later on in life right. and I I respect that um but for me I I just I was at a crossroads where I was like either I'm gonna do that or I'm going to live now and see if I can then balance my money in the meantime. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so far I've like I I've said this before to some people and it feels very selfish to say, but um last year for me was one of the best years of my life. Um and I'm very privileged and fortunate to have that mm-hmm. uh viewpoint on 2020 and I know it's really hard for a lot of people, but uh, a lot of the reason why it was was because I did take that leap of faith and go after what I want. 
Yeah, I mean, sharing your experience and sharing uh, your music, like, I don't think that that's selfish because that's sort of your way of <laughs> of giving back, you know? It's uh, like, hopefully. Uh, yeah, you know, processing that, putting it to song, and connecting with people. So exactly. That, yeah, that's that's uh, that's great. That's really great to hear. I mean, I mean, we can, as I've said before on this show, like, if just to add to what you're saying is like if there is any silver lining in what we're or what I'm saying on behalf of Safe House is like yeah last year was absolutely very hard on me and a lot of people I know like mm-hmm. personally financially emotionally like psychologically yeah. but for Safe House uh, we got some new great opportunities and we connected with a lot of really great people that we're working with because the one good thing that came out of that is that live streaming got attention that it absolutely had not gotten before yeah, in totally. my world, you know. Um, so there's that, and you know we're trying to use this as a as a service or platform or medium to do something nice with it, and mm-hmm. you know. But um, no, I'm so happy it exists right now. It's so important for musicians to have anything yeah. right now because yeah. it, like I said before, it's just like no one's really sure when that's gonna. F- fully come back right right well and so you live i mean you've worked in the live streaming world you've yeah you somebody was asking earlier if uh safe house is on uh twitch twitch yeah i mean is, is, are you putting this part of your life behind you now uh live streaming yeah, or like yeah, editing it, yeah yeah um i'm open to editing but it's definitely going to be more of a back burner part of my life it's i've more so i've started framing my life around music whereas before i framed it around what i believed to be the money maker of my career so now i'm i'm like how can i use this experience i have with editing to prop up what i actually want to do so that's more so my mindset moving forward okay yeah i mean it was as far as i'm concerned you're as good of an example of anybody that we've ever worked with to come and play the show. <laughs> so, oh. like, to start off our uh, year the way that we did tonight um, makes me really happy that, I mean, that you have experience with this and you know how this thing needs to go for it to go well. And I consider tonight uh, really well. So oh, good. thank you for sharing that with us and, and being a part of this tonight. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, well... Yeah. You want to get to it? You want to get to that scotch before these fools <laughs> drink it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> perhaps. Um, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. And, and in the meantime, uh, k- at, at Kelly Nichols Music on Instagram. Yep, eventually at Kelly we'll Nichols Music or at Evolution of a Girl Musical or at Peaks and Valleys Duo. Got a lot going on. Cool. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure before too long we'll be what, – how can everybody follow you online as you travel abroad? Um, all those links? I mean, more so the traveling abroad would be uh, at Kelly underscore Nichols. That would be the one to look at if you're interested in my Scotland shenanigans. Uh, Other than that, yeah, the other ones, you'll see what's going on with my music, at least. Cool. Well, there you have it, people of the Internet. We are just getting started with our 2021 sessions here live from South Austin, Texas. Ilios Productions. Um, thank you all for hanging with us tonight. Thank you, Kelly, for uh, making a little detour as she, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, got big things going for you this year as well. We're excited about that and very stoked that we got to host you. Um, thanks to the team here. Yes, thank uh, you so much, everyone. And, and Mike Williams. Yes, and thank you, Mike Williams. Yeah. Mike will I am. And we're taking uh, donations tonight for another hour or so. So please, if you can, afford... We're going to throw up that Streamlabs link one more time. Um, $7 suggested. $500. It'd be bitching to hit that. Um, <laughs> it'd be bitching to hit. Uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, sh- Kelly's pursuing a, I mean, you're, you're walking away from a job to go pr- pursue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know, but, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, no I'm, that's a great, that's a great yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, I, in terms of them funding that. Oh, that. well, no, no, no. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it. That would have went right over their head. Yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry.
<laughs> so don't listen um, to me. <laughs> but everybody else out there watching, uh, please uh, uh, donate what you can. Um, we do appreciate that. And there it is. And thank you, Max Wynn, Casey Fitzgerald, Samantha Mara. Ka oh Ma Ma my gosh. <laughs> They said, I, I've been pr pronouncing it wrong my entire oh, okay, life. Okay, so you should yeah, feel better. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Gator on the faders, Big Jim, Vic, Luke, Caveman, Sean Green, Adam Kirby, and Big Bull Campbell there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody helping out. Um, thank you, Ilios, for hosting us. We got two other shows this week. Woo. Thursday night, Saturday night. Tune in, hang out, and support Austin Music. Support the independent music community here on Safe House. And um, we're Safe House ATX if you want to check us out on the, the internet. internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we're on Patreon as well. Um, if you just, you know, if you're just like, hey, we like what you guys do, want to uh, support Safe House and continue to put on these shows, we have a growing cast of team members helping put on this show and uh you know we want to make sure that we've got working equipment and that we've got um you know we've got the the capabilities to to put on these shows and make these performers look good and sound good it, it takes an army for sure so uh any support is appreciated other than that i think i think we're good you good yeah i'm good where are you gonna barbecue tomorrow what am I getting at barbecue? Where? Oh, did Franklin's. Guys, yeah? Yeah, getting some brisket. So, did you guys place your order yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So much brisket is mm -hmm. going to be had. It's wow. going to be glorious. Is this just you and Sean? Um, it's it, oh. Franklin's. No, it's uh, Corey, Sean, I was and say, I. I know they have a, a minimum of like five pounds that you have to order. I'm like, you yeah. and Sean are getting five pounds of meat? No, tomorrow? I mean... <laughs> It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something yeah. we would do. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that's exciting. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're out of here. Uh, see you Thursday and uh, see you Saturday. Uh, y'all stay safe. Y'all have a good night. Thank you all for tuning in um, and uh, kicking off our 2021 sessions. It's nice to spend the night with you. Monday night show. That was cool. Went well. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Cool. Good night, everybody. We will see good you night. on Thursday.